good morning and welcome back to Whispering Hope Daily Sabbath School Lesson. We are here with Elder Richards and Elder Joseph. We are going to begin our topic this week is Jacob the Supplanter. And our topic for today is Jacob Leaves. We're going to begin, but before we go into our discussion, we're going to ask Elder Richards to do our prayer and Ella Joseph will do our memory text. Uh, good morning again. Uh, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for spirit life. Thank you for waking us up this morning and with the opportunity with all our faculties in place. We pray, Lord, that as we go through this lesson, your word, we pray that the uh, lesson that we'll be learning here today will be a lesson that we'll be able to apply to our lives. We pray, Lord, that someone will be able to learn something today, including ourselves. And that we may be able to have a closer walk with thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our memory verse comes from Genesis 27 and verse 36. And it reads, I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he had supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he had taken away my blessings. And he said, has thou not reserved a blessing for me? All right, great. So we're going to go right into our discussion. Now our question, our first question, how did Jacob deceive his brother? and his father. So we're going to ask Elder Richards to speak on how did Jacob deceive his brother? And then we're going to ask Elder Joseph to speak on how did Jacob deceive his father? So you're going to give us a broad view on both, and then you're going to speak on each particular topic. First of all, um, we're at a part in history, in life, earth history, where we see now generations upon generations taking place. And uh, we're now in the process of Abraham is now as his son, and um, which is Isaac. And now Isaac married. And now he marries Rebecca. And now they're, they're having two children, which is twins, Jacob and Esau. But uh, there's also that um, the angel of the Lord had told uh, Isaac and Rebecca that there are two nations that are growing inside of them. And the two nations uh, represent the two, the two boys. And, and so uh, it was told that the younger will rule the older. So which means the one that was born second will actually rule the one that was born first. And so the story continues when, you know, uh, in, in time, in the process of time, Jacob is now old, uh, believing that he was going to die. And he actually wanted to bless, or, you know, there, there, in that time, there's what is called a birthright where the oldest son receives a birthright, a special blessing that he becomes a priest and, and the leader of the family. But Jacob, um, who knew, and, and the mother who knew that there was the younger would lead, the older decided that they're going to put actions, uh, put things into action by trying to help out God's prophecy, you know, because they think that, you know, Isaac was not going to do it the way God has planned it. And so the mother overheard Isaac having a conversation with her son, with his son Esau, and telling Esau how much he wanted to bless him, you know, because he's of his old age, uh, he's blind now, and, uh, you know, it's at, at the appointed time he's going to die, and he understood that. And so the mother hearing this conversation decided that, you know, she must tell Jacob that, listen, look, you know, um, the prophecy is that you were going to be in charge. So I, I got to work something out. And, and so, you know, here's where now Isaac now, uh, um, Jacob now come into play because now he became part of the, the action in deceiving uh, not only his father, but his brother. And so the brother came home from, from, from hunting. He was hungry, tired and hungry, and, and, and wanted something to eat. And then and Joe, Jacob saw this as an opportunity now to, to bargain with his brother. And in bargaining with his brother, he wanted to, he deceived his brother by telling him, you know, what I, I, let's exchange something here. Uh, I will give you something to eat and you just give me your birthright. Now, to Esau, um, the birthright was not important to him. 
in, in that sense because he said he was all about you know himself hunting doing his things not concerned about you know the, the family's affair Jacob on, on the other hand was about you know staying home making sure that the family's doing well mom and dad is taking care of and, and so he was that's just the nature of the two individuals and so Jacob saw an opportunity, his motive behind the opportunity of giving him something to eat so that he can take what is rightfully belongs to Esau and, and make it his own. And so in that opportunity, he was able to seize the opportunity by saying, okay, you know what, I will give you something to eat. And if I give you the city, you will now bargain with me and give me the birthright. So I will now become in charge. And for Esau, it wasn't a problem because at that moment, at that time, that was not something that really concerned him. That's not important to him. And so for Jay, and that's how he was able to deceive his brother by simply offering something to eat, a uh, trickery, by offering something to eat so that he can take what belongs to his brother. But isn't it apparent that we see the same subtleness that Satan used in the Garden of Eden when he deceived Eve to eat? We got to be careful with this eating business. We eat too much. And when we're offered things to eat, we're ready because we're hungry and not thinking about the consequences of what we put into our body and what will happen after we eat. But we see the story continue. Now, his mother played a role, having overheard the conversation that there would be a blessing. She wanted this blessing to be given to Jacob. As the elder have said, God have already put things in place. Jacob is going to rule over Esau, no matter what. That's what it's going to be. But they're trying to force God's hand. And so now the father, <laughs> again, we're talking about food. Look at how food is played here. Isaac loved to eat this nice savory, and it would appear as uh, Esau could cook that thing so sweet, you could smell the, the aroma from a distance. Huh? That is why Esau wanted some. He smelled that nice aroma. So his father loved to eat that. Now he told his son to go get this stew, get a nice whatever the animal and fix it up, stew it, bring it for me. And then you are will bless you. His mother overheard and tell Jacob, look, you got to go in. Now we see what we call the people conspiring. We see conspiracy in this ordeal. His mother is conspiring with him to go and steal the birthright. What? How did he deceive his father? He was smooth-skinned. Esau was hairy. And I don't understand how he put on goat skin and put it on him, take up some of Esau's fragrances, whatever he used, put them on him, and went in. His father was blind, but his touch, how did his touch tell him that goat skin feel like here? I don't understand, but anyway, it happened. You know, you're getting old and senile and things are happening. You're not certain what is going on around you. But he could detect that there is a deception here because the voice sounds like the voice of Esau, but your voice sounds like Jacob, but the skin feels like Esau's skin. I don't understand. But anyway, he went in. And we saw also here impersonating. I think it's now people, people are impersonating people. This is impersonation. He impersonated his brother. And went in and so poor, yes. His father Isaac took it hook, line, and sinker. That this is definitely Esau. Though to me, it seemed as if it's Jacob, but the feeling is so. You know, sometimes we can't go by feeling. We got to be sure. That's the lesson. We got to be sure what we're doing. And so we saw that because he impersonated his brother. He was able to deceive his father and get the birthright, get the blessings which should have been given to his brother. So after all of this deception, we find out that Jacob now lives with Laban, his uncle Laban. So Elder Richards, how did Jacob find himself living with his uncle Laban? You know, after this all, all deception took place, and Issa now... Um, realizing that, you know, that is Dan and he wanted a blessing. And so Esau went to his father because remember the father already promised that, you know, go get me, make me that, that venison and, and I will bless you. I'll give you the best special blessing. Now, there are two, a couple of things that are taking place here. Number one, um, Isaac knew that uh, Jacob should have been the one to get that blessing. But Isaac was determined to go against the precepts of God to bless the first son. 
That's number one. Number two, um, Isha came home now with the the the, the, the stew, the stew that was meat, the venison that you know the father wished for. And, and and when he came in, he realized that you know both of them now realized that they were tricked by their brother, uh, by Jacob. And so Isa said, you know, I have no more blessings for you. You know, and, and now with that idea and that, 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 that information in mind, Isa became angry. You know, because his brother now, he's looking at his now, his brother not only stole his birthright, but stole the blessings that he should have gotten, that the father promised him. And so this idea that came upon him was that, listen, look, I have to take revenge. I have to do, take matters into my hands. And the matters that he thought of taking into his hands was to kill his brother. And, and we see this happen before. We saw um, Cain became angry with his brother Abel and, and slew his brother. And, and now we're back into the, the same situation somewhat, whereas now Esau is angry with his brother. And Esau pledged that, listen, I'm going to kill my brother because he took my blessing. Now here comes the mother again. <laughs> Rebecca overheard and saw his anger and decided, you know what, I must get Jacob out of this situation. And, and so she, she told Jacob, listen, look, get ready. Obey the, the, the voice of your mother only and flee to your uncle. Now, Laban is her brother and living in the land that she came from. And so she decided to create a situation where now he could have gone and lived with his uncle so that his life could be spared from, from his brother killing him. Um, you know, and I, if you continue the story, we'll see that that creates another problem because um, Rebecca died without seeing Jacob again. Jacob never saw his mother again. You know, and, and, and so he, she, that's how he ended up living with his uncle Labor because his brother wanted to kill him. All right. Before you leave, from Elder Richards, we're going to ask you to read for us Genesis chapter 30. Verses 25 to 31, Genesis 30, 25 to 31. All right, reading Genesis chapter 30, verses 25 to 31. Reading from the King James Version, and it says, And it came to pass, when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go unto my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me, for it was little which thou hadst before I came, and is now increased into multitude, and the Lord has blessed thee since my coming. And now when I shall provide for my own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything if thou wilt do this thing for me. I will again feed and keep thy flock. The question here, we're going to direct the first question to Elder Joseph. So, Elder Joseph, what is happening here in this story that we just read? And what kind of reasoning does Jacob use in this story? We recognize here that Laban realizes to himself that since Jacob came to him, he have an increase. Things are going well. But in the interim still yet, Uncle Laban was taking advantage of Jacob. The very same thing that Jacob did at home, he is now in the middle of the frying pan. He's feeling the heat. Uncle Laban is doing to him the very same thing. And Uncle Laban realized that while he's doing it to him, he is being blessed because God is increasing Uncle Laban's um, treasury. Right? Have a lot of animals, herds, man. Things are happening well. But now Jacob decides, look, 
it is time for me to go. I want to go home. So give me my wives, my children, and what I have, and I will depart. But Uncle Laban is not relenting because for him to go away, it means that the blessings and the increase is going to stop. So he made a wager. Look, tell me. Tell me how much you want to work for. I am going to pay you whatever amount of money you want. Okay? I'm going to take care of you. And we hear it some, sometime today when people are wagering and bargaining. They don't want you to leave. So he said, tell me how much you want to pay. And I will give it. He's making a bargain with him to stay on. Don't leave. Tarry here. Stay. Because Uncle Eben is only interesting in the increases that he was getting. He didn't care about Jacob. Didn't care about the grandchildren. Didn't care about his daughter. All he cared about was the amount of money he was making. And today we have people in the same sphere. Even our government sometimes, how they behave. They don't care about the citizen. <laughs> they don't care about the workman. Once the the increases in their pocket is good, they are happy. And that's what is happening right here, right now. It's happening in this time, and we see it happening in our day too. When people are just greedy for money and would go to any extent to conserve and preserve that which they are holding and coming into their coffers so that they can enrich themselves. We see this in Uncle Laban right here and right now. Elder Richards, what was Laban's response to this whole decision that Jacob decided on? He recognized uh, from the discussion that Laban recognized that because of Jacob's presence, and, and not only that Jacob's presence, but Jacob was a man now um, in tune with God. And, and now God has a special blessing. And so wherever Jacob went, blessings of the Lord followed him. And so Laban recognized because of his presence that God was blessing him. And so he did not want, because his motive was all about uh, finance. He realized that Jacob's being there is a blessing to him. You know, um, as Jacob said, you know, when I came, what you have was little. And since I've been here, it is multiplied because, of, and, and, and Jacob is capable to give thanks to God. Laban also recognized that the God that Jacob served was a powerful and mighty God and is able to bless. And so he, he, what he wanted, he wanted the presence of Jacob so he could have received the blessings of the Lord, but not really want to be a server, a servant of Jesus Christ, of God. And so he's saying, listen, look, I, I, just stay around me. Stay here. You know, I will give you anything because as long as you are here, I will be blessed. You know, there will be financial gains for me. And, and as uh, Elder Joseph rightly says, is that um, when, you, when, when we look at individuals today, we see some of these people who are very wealthy. They're not concerned about the less fortunate. They're only concerned about lining their pockets. Because if uh, you know, so I will keep people around so that I can be rich. You know, because you're bringing wealth into me. And so that's what the conversation was about. It was not a conversation of concern and love for Jacob. But he's more concerned about his financial gain. We're hearing the story of Jacob. We're understanding a little bit more. So, Elder Joseph, from what we've learned so far, do you believe that Jacob has changed his deceitful behavior after he's lived with Laban for so long? Yes, he changed. He changed. Notice that the commitment he made. He realized that he, was, he has been conned. And he's now thinking within his mind, I've been conned because I have conned my brother and my father back home. And so now he decides I'm going to go straight. Uncle Laban tell him to work seven more years for Rachel. Right? He worked. Uncle Laban changed his wages a lot of times. He didn't even fuss. He went to God. So God was now working with him. He had surrendered himself to God and God was now having his back. Totally surrender to God. And then we have here now a situation where he's going with what Uncle Laban says, filling these uh, requests that Uncle Laban made. You're going to work with me? Yes. This is what I'm going to do. And he, I'm going to go through with the sheep 
and the cattle, and I'm going to take out, you know, as the, the description explained, the sparkle, the ring tail, and all that. And he did just that. He was now going straight. He was now living in accordance with his conscience. His conscience have been relieved. He was renewed in his mind now that it is only the God of heaven is keeping him. And so having surrendered to God, he begins to do what is right. And so it, it is for us today. When we surrender to God, God will lead us in the right path. The Bible says, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the way there is destruction. And when you recognize that you are being destroyed because of your way you thought was right, then you, you return. So he has not returned to God, and he is following the dictates of Christ, per se. And he is doing now what needs to be done. He is living right in Uncle Laban's sight. And that, as far as I'm concerned, scares Uncle Laban. Because Uncle Laban see that he now is increasing and Uncle Laban is decreasing. Elder Richards, now we're here at the at Bethel. How did God reveal himself to Jacob at Bethel? From a very young age, we, we learn um, story and we learn songs, you know. Uh, Jacob's ladder. Uh, but the, the true aspect of that is that um, we know Jacob is now traveling. He, he's in Bethel. And, you know, and um, he, he grabbed this stone and put it and make it a pillow and he was sleeping. And in the dream, uh, he saw this ladder uh, from earth, stretching from earth to heaven, where angels were traveling back and forth. You know, and, and we know angels are messengers of God. And, and so the angels were traveling back and forth. And then he heard the voice of the Lord uh, saying, calling out to him, to Jacob, calling out to him and say, I am the Lord thy God. Now he announces himself uh, that I am the Lord thy God, Lord of your grandfather, Abraham, and the Lord of your father, Isaac. And so Jacob now understood that he's now speaking to the supreme being of God. And, and, and so that is how God revealed himself to him by announcing who he is. That he is the God. Now, Jacob understood that the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac, his father and grandfather, is the creator. He understands that he is the provider. He's the healer. God is the almighty one, the Elohim. And so that is how God revealed himself so that Jacob, the, 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 the knowledge that he has from, from his father and grandfather, the history, that he understood that now he's now speaking to the Holy One, the God, the one and true only living God. And that's how God revealed himself. And God does reveal himself to us in the same way too, that we can know that he is the Elohim, the Almighty, the God of God, the God who rules heavens and earth. Elder Joseph, now we're gonna, just going to hop back to Laban, where Jacob was going to leave Laban. Now what made Jacob, what helped him in the process of seeing that it was time to leave? In Genesis 31, 1 and 2, we recognize, we read, and he heard the words, speaking of Jacob, and he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob had taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was of our father's had he gotten all his glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and beheld it was not towards him as before. So Jacob recognized that his uncle and his cousins was against him. He was increasing. He was getting all the... Because every time the animals have their babies, they were coming out, ring tail and spangle and whatever he had done. But God said... No, Jacob recognized that it was God who was giving him the increase and not the, the thing that he put in the water. Remember, he cut some, some, some streaks of, 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 of bushes and put them in the water. When the animal went out to drink, when they were about when they were in heat, it wasn't his doing. It was God who was increasing him. And so he had more than what Uncle Laban had. And Uncle Laban's sons were begrudging him. And Uncle Laban also was re realizing that Jacob is increasing his waxing gray. He's having herdsmen, he's having other flocks. He have my two daughters. And so he's taking everything from me. And so they got jealous and angry. So we got to be careful with family feud. The family was feuding at him, his own family. 
realizing that he is increasing, he came with nothing over there. I know he have everything. So they were mad at him. And Uncle Laban, Uncle Laban countenance, remember we read about Nebuchadnezzar, how his countenance changed when Daniel, Hananiah, Ishmael, um, Mishael, and Azariah, when they spoke to him. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that his countenance changed. He got angry. Remember, it's the same thing that happened to, to Cain. Cain's countenance changed. So they were angry at him, and Jacob saw that. So he was saying, hey, look, these people are out to get me now. I must leave. And God himself, God himself told him, look, it is time to pack up and go. All right. So we run out of we run out of time. However, two important important questions, and the both of you will be putting your input for them. So the first one: How can we make life applications relevant to this postmodern time from today's lesson? We'll start with Elder Richards and then Elder Joseph. And then after, you're going to just go right into your takeaway and we'll wrap up our lesson for this morning. When we look at life application, I think the, the best way or the best thing that we can actually do is the word of God. And I want to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses uh, 29 to 32. And I just want to read something here. Um, it says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. For that which is good to the use of any fine, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, even speaking, be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind. One to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. You know, and um, I think that's the best way to sum it up. You know, when we, we look at our peers and we look at our, our in the past, we experience have taught us that, you know, if we don't live well with one another, that evil will become us. And, and so it is very important for us to the love of our fellow brothers and sisters is important for us to how we live with our neighbors. It's important to us how we, we treat one another because by doing that, we're living a Christ-like type of way. Now, the problem, if we look in the past, we see that there have been two classes of people, those who live according to God and those who live according to the devil. And those who live according to God, we see that the blessings that bestowed upon them because they're doing the things of God. But then those that live according to the devil, we see how um, the Bible speak of how their countenance has changed. We see that you know this this evil uh, uh, changed their mood and their mindset and, and bring them to a place to, to commit murder. And, and, and so you know we have to look at those examples and, and ask ourselves the question: which of the two class would we rather be a part of? The part that does good, help others and see the joy uh, fill their soul, or the part that lives to destroy someone by by our words and, and by our actions and, and so when we looked at that that, that question we, I, I think the best way to sum it up is that live our best life according to the principles and the precepts of god and that everyone by doing so we will please not only god but please everyone that surrounds us when we would have read what happened to mankind in the past it is relevant for us to recognize that we are not to walk the same way as they walk because we have now seen the consequences and the, the, the hardships that they go through when they move away from God. So that's, that, that, that's the first point right there. We have read, we understood. These things were written for our admonition that we should know to do right. And second to that, what is my takeaway? I will go to Numbers 23, verse 19 and 20. And it reads, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither son of the son of man that he should repent. Had he not said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, verse 20, I have received commandment to bless. And he had blessed, and I cannot reverse it. 
when God says he's going to bless, he's going to bless, he's going to come, he told, he tell them from the outset, told Rebecca, Jacob is going to rule over Isa. He's the one who's going to get the blessing. The father wants to give the blessing to the firstborn because that was the custom. But God said, no, it's not the firstborn. We got to follow what God said. When God says he's going to bless, he's going to bless. There is nothing that can stop God's blessing, no matter what man tries to do. Whatever comes your way, my beloved, those who are listening to us this morning, this good Thursday morning, remember that when God says he's going to bless, he's going to bless. Nothing can stop it, no matter what anybody do. One of my favorite professors would tell me, come hell or high water, God is going to come through. He would tell us when he's lecturing to us, come hell or high water, you are going to do this or that. That is what God says. God says, I'm going to bless Jacob. Jacob is going to be the heir. And so nothing could stop it. And so I want us to remember today that when God says he's going to bless, he's going to bless. His hand is not too short. All he says, he says, come unto me and I will, I will. I will come let us reason together. Isaiah 118. And in Revelation, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock open and I will give you a blessing. All right. So... Now we've, we're out of time, so you're going to give me one sentence each of what your takeaway is from this lesson. One sentence each, your takeaway. Galatians 6 2 says, Be you one another burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Uh, our motives for helping one another should be uh, transparent, should, not be un uh, should be uncompromising. And our desire to serve God and serve others should be pure. When we look at the whole story, be sure your sins shall find you. Jacob realized that what he did came back to bite him. But he turned to the Lord and the Lord forgave him. So let us remember that anything we do, it is going to come back to affect us because there's consequences in the things that we do. So we've come to the end of our lesson this morning. We're glad that you could be with here with us and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we answer your questions and the questions from our lesson this week. See you there and remember to be on time and remember to stay safe. The South Leeward Conference of Seventh-day Adventists presents The Keys to Happiness Evangelistic Impact with the powerful, charismatic and spirit-filled international evangelist Dr. Joseph Smith out of Jamaica. This one-of-a-kind hybrid spiritual experience commences on May 14, 2022 at 9 a.m. at the Bible Speaks Seventh-day Adventist Church and continuing nightly at 7 p.m. You can also follow the action live at the Seventh-day Adventist Church close to you. You cannot afford to miss these powerful Bible-based messages. You will enjoy health nuggets, family features, and beautiful singing. It's the Keys to Happiness Evangelistic Impact, starting May 14, 2022, at 9 a.m. and continuing nightly at 7 p.m. 